This is an E flat 7 sharp 9. Hmm. Yes. This is a G major Xbox Razor sharp 13. Certainly. And this is the chemical mechanism by which a proton exchange membrane fuel cell works. Of course. I'm going to stop it right there. If this is what it feels like every time you try to venture outside of the comfortable world of the same old bar chords and open chords that you already know, then you're in the right place. Everybody wants to play beautiful chords, and there are videos and lessons all over the internet that'll show you how to play some beautiful chords. The problem that I always run into with these videos is, what do I do with the chord now? It's cool to be able to play a pretty sounding chord, but it always ends up being like a one-off thing. I have no way to actually apply it to my playing. In this video, we're gonna break it down, and we're also gonna talk about the fact that you're closer to really beautiful sounding chords than you probably think. In fact, most of you are only one note away. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take the simple bar chord shapes that you already know, and by adding just one note, you can turn those into really beautiful sounding chords. This will result in you learning four totally new chord shapes that you can use to make any song more beautiful. And of course, I'm going to explain these new chord shapes so you can actually understand them and use them in your playing with full confidence. So let's get started. So first things first, for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna assume you know the four basic bar chord shapes, okay? That is a major shape with a sixth string root, a minor shape with a sixth string root, a major shape with a fifth string root, and a minor shape with a fifth string root. If you don't already know these, I'm gonna have a video link that I already made that fully explains these. And the truth is, even if you don't know these four basic bar chord shapes, you'll still be able to get a lot out of this video. But to be honest, your understanding of where we're going with these more beautiful chord shapes is gonna be less complete than if you know these bar chords coming into this video. And for those of you following along with my guitar roadmap where I explain every concept you need to know on the guitar in order, we are now in the fifth level. So now that you've been watching for this long, I'm gonna start unloading some technical jargon, all right? This video is all about what we call seventh chords. I'll explain why we call them seventh chords and why these chords are considered to be much more beautiful than basic chords in just a moment, but we're gonna start with an explanation of how do you play these chords? We're just gonna start with the chord shapes and then we'll get into the theory and that stuff. So like I said before, what this video really comes down to is teaching you four new chord shapes. Right off the bat, I wanna tell you that the correct way to think about seventh chords, the chords we're learning in this video, is as a progression from the bar chords you already know. So in the same way that you started off with open chords, we'll take a G here, and you mastered those, and so you moved on to bar chords. You learned that you could play G like this, or even like this. In this video, you're gonna learn that you can play it as a seventh chord. That's really the difference. That's how this concept fits into your guitar learning progression. So to show you the four new seventh chord shapes that you're gonna learn in this video, I'm gonna hang out here all around the fifth fret. Let's start with a chord you already know. Here's D minor. This is a minor bar chord with a fifth string root. In this case, the root, the lowest note, is D, and so this is a D minor chord. Everybody knows this chord, it's super reliable, but sometimes it can be a little boring. If we take our fourth finger, our pinky, and we remove it from the fretboard and change nothing else about the chord, keep all the other notes, including this bar here, then you get a D minor seventh chord. This is your first seventh chord. You went from playing a regular minor chord to playing a minor seventh chord. You can see how it's easy to think of this as a progression from the regular bar chord you already know. Let's talk about the next chord shape, which would be a major seventh chord. Again, I'm gonna use a fifth string root. I'm just gonna make it a major shape this time. This is the major fifth string root bar chord that everybody knows and loves. If we take this note here on the G string and we lower it by one, we're gonna put it right here. Now, to keep everything else about the chord the same, we kind of have to change up the fingering. So instead of doing the regular bar across the fifth fret, plus, you know, the way most people play this chord is by taking your third finger and barring across the seventh fret on the D, G, and B strings. Instead of doing that, we're gonna keep this bar on the fifth fret, but we're gonna put our third finger on the seventh fret of the D string. Our second finger is gonna go on the sixth fret of the G string, that's a big change, okay? And our fourth finger is gonna go on the seventh fret of the B string. It'll sound like this. That's a major seventh chord. So again, in the same way that we went from a regular minor chord to a minor seventh chord, we just went from a major chord to a major seventh chord. 
So those are the major and minor seventh chord shapes if you want to play with your root on the fifth string. And the reason I started with the root on the fifth string instead of the sixth string is because it's easy to see how we take these regular minor and major shapes that you already know and we change just one note, like I said at the beginning, and they become seventh chords. And there's really no denying that these sound a lot more pretty than your regular chords that you were playing. But if we had 7th chord analogs for the bar chords that were anchored on the 5th string, then what about the chords that are anchored on the 6th string? We have these regular shapes that everybody's familiar with. Here's the 6th string root major shape. And here's the 6th string root minor shape. How do we turn these into 7th chords? Well, with the minor shape, it's pretty easy. Just like on the 5th string, we remove our 4th finger and change nothing else about the chord. You have a minor 7th chord now. It is worth noting that with the 5th string root minor 7th shape, there is a version of this that people play more often. You'll see this every now and again. But the more common voicing, I would say, is to see people take their second finger and put it on the root note, put it on the low E string. In this case, uh, I'm playing an A minor 7th, so the root note will be out here on the 5th fret and then take your third finger and bar across the D, G, and B strings again on the fifth fret. Oh, and when you're playing this version, the A string is muted and you really don't worry about the high E string. I would say that you see this voicing more in jazz and this voicing more in rock, but the truth is you see them both all the time in all kinds of different genres, so I really need to teach you both of them. But what about that major shape? Here's the regular six string root major bar chord that everybody knows. Again, this is an A major chord because the root here, the lowest note, is an A. To make this an A major seventh chord, we actually have to change the fingering quite a bit, which is why I've saved this one for last. You take your first finger, and instead of barring across, in this case, the entire 5th fret, you just play the 5th fret on the low E string. You take your second finger, and it's going to go on the 5th fret of the B string. Your third finger is going to go on the 6th fret of the D string. And your fourth finger is going to go on the 6th fret of the G string and the A string and the high E string are both going to be muted. Again, here's the regular bar chord shape that everybody knows, A major, and here's A major 7. Now, if you know your bar chords, what I'm about to say is going to come as no surprise to you, but I just want to be clear about the fact that just like bar chords, you can move 7th chord shapes around. So, you know, we have, uh, again, our 5th string root minor shape here. When the root's here on the 5th string, and we're on the 5th fret, the lowest note is D. So this is a D minor chord, right? And we learned just now that you can easily take this and turn it into a D minor 7th chord. In the same way that you can take a regular 5th string root minor shape and play a different chord just by moving the whole shape around. So again, in this case, the root's D. This is D minor. I could move the root here to C. It'd be C minor. You know, heck, I could go up here, this would be uh, F sharp for F sharp minor. You can do the same thing with the 7th chord variant, right? So uh, D minor 7, C minor 7, F sharp minor 7, you get it. And this applies to all the 7th chord shapes that we just learned. So, you know, even that 6th string root major shape. Again, here, when we put the root here on A, this is going to be an A major 7. But we could make this a, uh, you know, a B major 7, C major 7. D major 7, uh, whatever, F major 7, all the way down here, and it still works. I just want to be clear that these shapes are movable. So that's how you play 7th chords, but as of right now, I've taught you a little more than how to put your hand in the right spot. There's still two main questions that remain. One is, why do we call them 7th chords? And number two is, how do you use these chords in your playing? To answer the first question, we have to understand how we build chords in the first place. Chords are made from groups of notes called triads. If you think about that prefix tri, it means three. Triads are groups of three notes. To build any given chord, any given triad, we take the scale that the chord is based on and we use the first note, the third note, and the fifth note. 
I'll give you a really easy example. Let's take a really easy example, a C major chord, right? Here's the open chord version. Here's one of the bar chord versions, another common bar chord version, whatever, it's all the same, from a music theory perspective at least. A C major chord is built on the C major scale, and that's easy enough to remember. Here's the C major scale. Like I said, all we do to build a C major triad is take the first note, the third note, and the fifth note of that scale. So the first note of a C major scale is C. Again, very easy to remember. And then we just count. One, two, three. This note is an E, so the third note is an E. And then you just keep counting to five. Four, five. And this note is a G. So a C major triad is made up of a C, an E, and a G. And with guitar chord shapes, you know, we repeat some of those notes so that we can play them across all the strings, but with all the versions of a C major chord, you're just playing those same three notes, the first, third, and the fifth note of the C major scale, C, E, and G. And this goes for all the minor chords and the minor scales as well. Uh, if we were to take a G minor chord, for example, we would just take the first, third, and the fifth notes of the G minor scale. First, third, fifth. You get it. All a seventh chord does is it takes the seventh note in a scale, or sometimes called the seventh scale degree, and it just adds that to the triad. So instead of just being the first, third, and the fifth note, a seventh chord is the first, third, fifth, and seventh note. So in the case of C major, instead of just being the first note, third note, fifth note, it would be one, three, five, plus the seventh note. That's why they're called seventh chords. We're just adding the seventh note of the scale. And just so you know, there's no magic to any of the chord shapes, right? So this is the fifth string root major seventh chord shape. I'm putting the root on C, so this is C major seven. I could do the same thing with the sixth string root chord, again, C major seven. The purpose of these chord shapes, and really all chord shapes, is just so we don't have to think every time, okay, C major seven has this note, this note, this note, this note, I need to find those on the fretboard and put my fingers in the right spot. The chord shapes just allow us to go, okay, here's C, I know the rest of the shape, it'll work out to C seven. So you can see why I've been saying that you're only one note away from beautiful chords, because you just take your regular triads, you know, your regular major and minor chords, and you just add one note the seventh, and now you've arrived at a really, really pretty sounding chord. And as a really quick side note for those of you who are wondering, the reason seventh chords sound so pretty actually has more to do with physics than most musicians really want to get into. To give you the very short version of it, if you think about a scale, there's seven notes because, you know, on the eighth note, it repeats. So the eighth note is really just the first note all over again. Because seventh chords have both the first and the seventh note in them, there's actually a little bit more tension than a regular triad. Because the seventh note and the first note, if you actually look at their sound waves, if you look at the waveform, they're very similar, but they're not quite exactly the same. And because of that, there's a lot of tension. Something you'll discover as you get more and more into music is that having just the right amount of tension usually makes stuff sound pretty good. Like I said, this has a lot to do with the convergence of physics and music. And if you're interested in this, go check out Adam Neely's channel. He has a lot of stuff on this and it's super interesting. But there's one important question that remains, and that is, how do you use seventh chords? Luckily, the answer is really simple. It's really easy to use seventh chords. Basically, anywhere you would use a major chord, you can use a major seventh chord. And anywhere you would use a regular minor chord, you can use a minor seventh chord. You can substitute a seventh in for any major or minor and it will pretty much always work. I'll give you an example. Here's a really simple chord progression that won't give me a copyright strike. G, E minor, C, right? I could strum this with open chords and it would sound fine. If I wanted a slightly different flavor, I could play it with bar chords. If I wanted yet another flavor, I could just take my bar chords and make them seventh chords. I could do it to all of them, I could do it to none of them, I could do it to some of them, it doesn't matter. It will always work. Seventh chords are easy to use. 
And that's pretty much everything. We talked about how to play seventh chords, we talked about the theory behind why we call them seventh chords, we even talked about how to use them in your own playing. So there you go, there's your full guide to seventh chords, which are, of course, the gateway to beautiful chords in general. So before you were wandering around in the desert of guitar confusion, and hopefully I've provided some answers. Although, you know, if there's a question remains, it's probably something to the effect of, you know, all this about seventh chords is great, but I see chords all the time that have numbers that are way beyond seven. I see nine and 11 and 13. I even see stuff like, you know, sus two and sus four. What about all that stuff? To give you the quick answer, all of those are called chord extensions, all right? Chord extensions are just what we call it when you go beyond or somehow deviate from just the basic triad that we talked about earlier. Even sevenths are technically chord extensions. Right now, don't worry about any of that, okay? Just focus on mastering seventh chords. I'll do a whole video on chord extensions in the future, but for now, just focus on being able to play the chord shapes. You know, make sure you fully understand seventh chords so that you can apply them to your playing with full confidence. Think about it like this. When you were an absolute beginner, you had to master the basic open chords. Then, you should have moved on to like basic bar chords. Now, in this video, you know, we've talked about seventh chords, which is the most basic chord extension. And then, once you have seventh chords mastered, then you can worry about the other chord extensions. But for right now, it's all about seventh chords. Because after all, seventh chords are the gateway to harmonic beauty on the guitar. That's it for this video, and as always, thank you for watching.